You're listening to the Staging Sips Podcast with Lori Fisher. This podcast is dedicated to helping real estate staging CEOs build healthy businesses that grow, flow, and thrive. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm so happy, as always, to be here with you. And this week, we're actually doing a replay of a past episode. And the reason for it is that it is so good. (laughs) I want to make sure that if you missed it, you get to hear it. And if you listened to it before, you get to listen to it again. It is all about how to hire the best new team member. And the reason I wanted to replay this coming off of the heels of sharing about Google Drive and Google Calendar and Asana and project management and all of that is that inside of the Accelerate program at, well, Rethink You Now Staging Business School, This is what we focus on. These are the conversations as you become that Accelerate business owner and have to start to really think about hiring. You really haven't done it before. It's like middle school dating. So I want to share with you what middle school dating looks like in terms of hiring and help you be more sophisticated right out of the gate with your hiring process so that you get it done well the first time. And this episode, as I was going through and researching what I wanted to talk about, I thought, oh, gosh, this episode is just so good. And we have tools and resources inside the Accelerate program that support all of what I'm talking about in this business, in this episode. In this episode, we talk about um, job description. We talk about application, all of that. We have all of that information done for you inside of the Accelerate program. So if you are hitting your stride, you're starting to book more appointments, and you're really starting to notice that you might need to be hiring a next great team member for your business, whether that's an administrative support team member or a stylist or something like that, join us inside Accelerate if you're not sure where to start with that because We have the documentation you need, the process, the steps, and then the conversation and support for you as a business owner in order to manage your own mindset around hiring. Because once you move from that technician role of the stager in your business and you move through the Accelerate business owner, you are really a middle manager. And that has uh, that likely is a role you've not filled before. And I want to help you navigate that period of time because unlike any other phase of business, it is probably the most overwhelming in terms of your bandwidth. Like your bandwidth is so stretched because not only have you, you know, been doing all the roles in your business, now you're a a trainer and a manager. So you just start stacking hats on yourself at at the beginning of the accelerate phase. And what I want to teach you to do is to hold strong while that's going on, teach you to do it more efficiently so then you can begin to shed those roles and let your team take them over. So anyway, in doing the research for this episode, I came across episodes 17 and 18. They are so flipping good. So I'm sharing 18 with you today. But again, I'm going to encourage you to go to the link in the show notes to check out the Accelerate program and just know that the Accelerate program, you can pay it across six months, you can pay it across 12 months, you have lifetime access to content and calls that we do every month. Like that's bananas, like bananas. (laughs) There's nowhere else that you are going to have lifetime access. I have students who have been with me for two years almost at this point, and they pay their one fee and they have been with us showing up twice a month to get coaching and troubleshooting on their business for almost two years. Like that is incredible value. So get your buns over there. Check it out. And at this time of year, if you need anything to help with your taxes, education is a great thing to invest in at the year end in order to help you with that. So it's a win-win. So you're actually, you can, you can, the price of the course, it, offsets in many ways with the taxes that you will save on profit by investing in the program. So that's my pitch for joining the Accelerate program in Staging Business School. And 
enjoy this episode. It is really, really good about how to hire your next best team member. Okay, bye for now. Hey, everybody. This podcast is brought to you by Rethink You. The doors are open to enroll in Rethink You. This program is a game changer. If you are struggling at all with your business, please come and join us. You have in this round, you have lifetime access to all of the content, all of the calls. You have a 3K for 3K guarantee and you have payment plans. So if you want to start today and join us inside Rethink You, you start for as little as $250 a month. It's amazing. Come join us www.rethinkhomeinteriors.com forward slash rethink you. The link will be in the show notes as well. Come and join us. We're looking forward to helping you. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to the podcast. I am so happy that you are joining us today. I love the series that we're in right now. I realize I can talk about hiring like all day long. I can really riff on it. So this week is all about how to hire the best new team member. And if you'll remember in episode 17, or if you haven't listened to that, go back and do so. What you need to have in place is really important before you start your hiring process so that you feel like you're really prepared. Because one of the things is very often when we go through a hiring process, we can really be kind of on our heels a little bit. And sometimes that leads to us hiring not the very best candidate, but the first available candidate. And that can really cause problems for us as a business owner. And it can cause problems for teams as well. So we want to make sure that your hires are really, really good. And you can do that from the very beginning. And today I'm going to give you some advice from our very own hiring process and how you can think about it and some of the things that you can use in your own hiring process. So We're going to dive into all of that. The first thing is, though, that I want to talk about before you hire, you are hiring somebody is like, where do you start? We didn't talk about that in last week's podcast. Like, how do you know when you're ready to hire? What do you think about or what positions and roles do you think about hiring for first? So let's give you a little foundation there before we dive into the actual hiring process. So there are some key departments in any staging business. And now this is just, um, you know, kind of generic that most businesses have, but each staging business may have even deeper departments, you know, more departments, but these are kind of the keys. So in any staging business, there's marketing and sales, there's operations, there's delivery, and there's finance. So when you're thinking about those key departments, uh, in the beginning, when you are the uh, key, you know, CEO and stager, you're really filling all of those roles. And so you want to understand where you need to start taking hats off of you, as it were. So you're going to start by looking at some of your own competencies and then also evaluating some of those departments. Um, And I'll talk about that in a minute. So let's talk about evaluating your own competencies first. So we all have, you know, things that come to us very naturally. For many of us, that's probably the staging part, right? It's a love. It's something we can do in flow. It's something that we can do all day that we don't need to get paid for necessarily. We just enjoy it. The time seems to just fly when we're in that zone. So that is what one of my business coaches calls your unique brilliance, your unique brilliance zone. It's just the space that you enjoy inhabiting. And it could also be things beyond staging. Maybe you're particularly good at creating uh, social media posts, or you love writing, and you, or you love PR. Like those can be other things. So those are likely the areas that that unique brilliant zone and even a competency zone, like something that you're good at. But if you had to do it all day, you probably wouldn't love it quite as much. Those are the two areas that you're going to hire for very likely last. Where you want to be looking at is what is called your drudgery zone or your zone of incompetence. So the drudgery zone is something you can do. It's just not something that you really want to be doing. You don't like to be doing it. So for me, one of the things that I didn't really enjoy truthfully was calling back people who had called us. (laughs) I used to get very nervous, not really like much of a phone person, that was an area of opportunity for me. And I was also working out in the field a lot. So it wasn't happening. That's something else we'll talk about in a minute. And then there is the incompetent zone that 
is you just aren't good at it at all. I've had a bookkeeper. That was my first hire in my business as a subcontractor was a bookkeeper. I looked at that and I was like, that is truly my incompetent zone. And the bookkeeping is is not getting done because it's my incompetent zone. And when it is, I'm terrible at it. So I decided rather than paying my hourly rate, 150 at the time, $150 an hour to have a terrible bookkeeper who wasn't getting anything done and was doing it poorly when she did it, I fired myself and I hired a bookkeeper. So you're going to start by looking at your own skill sets when you are a, you know, a company roster of one. That's one of the first steps. The next step in thinking about where you're going to hire is that you're going to evaluate each of those departments, marketing and sales, which is I combine under one umbrella, operations, delivery, and finance. And you're going to look at the people you have in place, the processes you have in place, and the tools you have in place. And when you're looking at that, one of the things you can say is, okay, like, so for example, Today, if I were running my business by myself and I knew I wasn't great at answering the phone and things like that, maybe what I would have done was created a way to call those people back using something like slide dial, let them know I was in touch and say, please email me at this email address and I'll send you a link to my calendar or something like that, right? Like if that were for inquiries for realtors who I'd worked with before who wanted to um, book an appointment, for example. So sometimes it could be an issue of tools. Sometimes it can be an issue of your process isn't right in a specific area. So if you're not getting social media done, maybe you don't have a really good process in which to do it so it doesn't get done. And if you just cleaned up the process, you might be able to hold on to that responsibility longer. And then there's an issue of people. So for example, if you want to run a vacant staging business and you want to increase the number of vacant staging you know, appointments and installations that you can do in a given week, you're definitely going to need to dial in on your process and your tools, but most likely you're going to need people as well. Because in order to do that, in order to leverage your time, you need to replicate yourself, right? So there's ways that we replicate ourselves with tools. There's ways that we can replicate ourselves with processes and automation, like we talked about um, in several podcast episodes ago about um, using your CRM, your Uh, customer relationship management tool, your email list, that can um, replicate you through automation. And sometimes you just purely need another person in your business. So that's what we'll talk about today. And I want to remind you that in a staging business, uh, business in general, your time gets leveraged very quickly and that will necessitate your need, you necessitate your need, <laughs> that will create your need to hire. Um, but because your time gets leveraged really quickly, you also need to put a really good process in place for your, for hiring because that can also end up taking up too much of your time. Because as I learned in the beginning, people would reach out and want to schedule a chat with me to learn more about our business because they were interested. And I thought, okay, sure. You know, I'm interested in like, seeing who's out there and what's going on. And inevitably, I'd get on a chat with somebody who was telling me their entire employment history and then to tell me that they were working full-time, but they could help on weekends and evenings. And I don't want to work on weekends and evenings. And that's not part of my company's policy. And Or they needed full-time work and I only had part-time work. So it just was one of those things where it was taking up and soaking up a lot of time. So I don't want you to start with a phone chat. I want you to be smarter than me. This podcast is all about learning from the things I did right and the things that I didn't do right and paying it forward to you. So this is one of those areas where I needed a little time to see what it looked like to schedule those chats that people were requesting and find out that does not work. So we end up deciding to use an application at the very front of our process. So this is for anybody who inquires because I always like to have a roster of people who we could potentially hire if they meet all of the things I'm going to talk about with you today. Um, If they seem like they're a right fit, then I'd I'd like to have them on file in case and be prepared when we are ready to hire. So... um, Anyway, oh, and I realized too, the other thing was that every time I chatted with somebody, even if they weren't ideal, I'd always want to hire them because I'm a people pleaser, right? I didn't want to tell people, oh, no, we're not hiring or, you know, you're not a right fit. Like I forgot that's in my notes here. And it's real, that's really important to say, especially if you're like me, where you love everybody and you can find 
points of connection with all kinds of people, you'll want to hire too many people. So we got to start with an application process. You can simply use a Google document or a Google, for, I mean, a Google form, not a Google document, a Google form or something like that, where you can create an application. And in order to create your application, I'm going to share with you the things that we thought about when we created ours. Um, also, I will just say that if you join Rethink You, um, Rethink You has our, our application right in there, all of our application hiring documents. So that right there is worth its weight in gold. That's in our swipe studio inside of Rethink You. So anyway, um, we, the first thing I want to say is you've got to start with those role responsibilities like we talked about in episode 17. Defining your role re- responsibilities are really, really important because you want to hire the person to fit the role responsibility. You don't want to fit the role responsibility to the person you hire. So what do I mean by that? You want to create a very defined like need. You are the CEO of your business. You have a need to bring somebody in. You've got to know what that person likely will be doing in your business. So if it's administrative or if it's a styling assistant, you want to begin to write out all of the things that that person will be doing. And the way that you can do that is most likely you have been doing that. And these are the the roles that you want to take off of yourself. So you want to begin to define that and then you're going to create your application in a way that helps you find the person that fits that role responsibility versus reverse engineering it. Because what happens is if you bring on a person without really vetting them according to how I'm going to teach you today, um, you could end up realizing they're in the wrong seat in your business and they may not have the skill set or the 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 matches, we're going to talk about the matches in a minute that you need them to have. And you might end up shifting them in places and kind of filtering them through. And maybe they're taking portions of one job and portions of another. You really want somebody to be able to own the full list of responsibilities in their, for, for their, their uh, responsibility within your company so that not only can they accomplish them, but they are empowered to then help you create better systems and processes. Because where you want to get to is your team is creating the systems and processes because they have the skill set and now they have the insight into how their, their workflow works so they can actually create it better than, than you can, which is a really cool place to be. Okay. So the application, our application is pretty lengthy and it gets given to anybody who is interested in having a a chat with me. And the reason that we do that is because we want to create a red velvet rope policy around our business. We don't want to just be hiring anybody. We want to be hiring really good quality candidates. As part of our application process, they also have to submit four personality tests that we we tell them exactly what they are. They're all free and they have to take those tests and they have to attach those results to their application. And our application includes filtering questions for the role that we're hiring for. And we'll go over that in a minute, what the filtering kinds of questions are that you can be using. All of this in this application process guides us to knowing if they are someone who would be a potential fit And it shows us their motivation if they're willing to invest the time in doing this. And what we have found is that most candidates won't fill out our application. They are enthusiastic. They tell us all about how they've always been interested in design, for example, if we're talking about a styling uh, a, um, a styling assistant and they'll tell us all about that and how they you know love our work and they've seen us on social media and they love our website and they've always wanted to do this and they're obsessed with HGTV. And you know what they're not willing to do? sit and fill out an application. (laughs) So that tells us something about them right now, because as you and I know, as CEO, CEOs of staging businesses, our work is intense. We are sometimes hustling. We are doing a lot of physical work. It's not always easy. And we want somebody who, if they are already create, you know, an obstacle is created in that they're not going to fill out an application. That tells us something about them. It's fine with us. We don't want people who are not going to fill out that application. So we'll send that application out to anybody and everybody because we know it's a special person who is willing to fill it out. We only want the best. And like I said, our work is strenuous and requires a commitment and we want to see a commitment level coming in. Okay. So 
like I said, your application is going to help you identify the want matches between the role responsibility and the candidate. So what are want matches that I keep referring to here? Well, there a want match is simply where you want something and somebody matches that that desire. They fulfill that want for you. And we have four personality or four want matches uh, that happen throughout the course of our application. There's a personality match. So there are questions that are designed for that in addition to the the um, personality uh, tests that they have to take. We want to elicit a scheduling match. And we'll talk about these each in a little more detail coming up. A skills match and a filters match. So you notice that skills match is a little bit lower on the totem pole <laughs> as it works. I know that actually that's not politically correct these days, but lower in the priority list. I'm, I'm working, I'm, I'm working to be better there. Um, but a personality match, um, sorry, the skill set match. A lot of times if somebody is reaching out to you because they're interested, they already have at least a baseline of skill set typically, but we also vet that in other ways. But we really need a personality match first and foremost, both because they're client facing a lot of times, but also because internally in your team dynamic, you want to make sure that you have good personality matches. And here's the thing. For certain roles, you don't necessarily want somebody exactly like you. You In many things, like when we go back to your unique brilliance right through to your incompetency zone, you are going to need to find somebody in your like drudgery and incompetence zone who is likely very different than you in terms of their skill set, maybe part of their personality. But then there are certain things where you do probably want a personality match. And that can be very front facing. If you're very good with clients and they love you and, you know, they, um, sellers love working with you because of your personality, you're probably going to want to find people who are similarly aligned to your own personality match. So let's talk about that. So your personality match, like I said, like I mentioned, is super important because very often they're external to your client. So they are the forward facing, you know, part of your brand. So you want to make sure that anybody who is in touch with clients and even in a vacant staging business, we know that clients can show up on the job, whether we want them to or not. Sometimes we want to make sure that the team that could potentially interface with a client, whether that's a realtor, investor, seller, Airbnb host, what whoever it is that you work for, um, you want to make sure that they have a really tight, dialed in, friendly, accommodating, kind personality. Most in particular, the person who's answering your phones or answering your email inquiries. You want to make sure that that is, that, that is a really nice personality match. Um, and we, as I mentioned, we have four personality tests as a part of that application process because we really want to overlap what we see in those personality tests because that's the first thing we want before we get on the phone with them. This is a way we can begin to see through those personality tests if they meet the criteria for the personality we are looking for for that particular role. So what happens for us when we get an application submitted and we look at those personality traits. We also look at all, of course, all of the answers in the application, but we look at the personality traits and we just, we understand, first of all, are they being identified as somebody who is a team player, as somebody who loves to pitch in, who likes, you know, likes to take direction and then, and go and then work um, autonomously? Are they somebody who might be open to feedback? Like all of those things are really helpful for us when we're making a decision as to will they move forward? So right away, we're looking for that personality match. Um, the next is a scheduling match. And the scheduling match is really, really important in the beginning of your hiring, in particular for those um, those who have never hired anyone for any business ever before, because likely you're going to have you know hours limited that you are probably starting out hiring somebody just to get your feet wet, right? So you may have you, so we want to go back to episode 17 where we talk about getting your calendar to be clean because you really want to understand how many hours a week you actually need support in your business. And the only way you can do that is really look at, okay, when are the hours that your business is open? When do your appointments start and finish? How long does it take you to do certain things? How many of those are you looking to do during the week? What activities happen on what days? When do you need support and all of that? So like, for example, it's really easy when you have a styling assistant. If you know that you have maybe appointments, uh, uh, 
eight appointments available in a week. And you know that for you, doing eight appointments a week, week after week is not sustainable. How many of those appointments do you want to cleave off and how much time does that take? So maybe a, an up to two hour styling evaluation can take up to um, six hours between travel and then if there's any written report coming out of that, that, you know, and maybe there's administrative time as well that happens. Maybe, you know, your stylist is answering questions from a client after the fact, which of course we try to minimize at Rethink Home Interiors. We try to be like super clear on our direction so that that doesn't happen. But you maybe you want to budget for that. So like if you want somebody to take on four appointments a week, that is, could be 24 hours a week, 20 to 25 hours a week for a styling assistant within your business, right? So that's how you begin to understand how to know how many hours to bring somebody on for. You also want to think about things like are they a scheduling match in the fact that there are times of the year where we are busting at the seams with business in the spring and the fall, and then we get kind of quiet in the summer and winter months? Do they have that accordion schedule ability? Are they okay if they have a lot to do in given periods of time and they don't have enough to do? This is really a way to parse out those people that are looking for like steady income Um that you may not be able to provide that to necessarily in the beginning. So you want to find somebody, I, that's how I always describe it. You need to have an accordion of flexibility. You need to be li- really wide open and ready to go in the spring and fall. You need to be able to shrink that back in the the um, summer and winter months. So that is what is called creating the scheduling match. So you want to include questions in your application that kind of get at that. Like, are you okay if there isn't consistency in your schedule every week? Like that's another thing. Some people want to know that they are going to be working every single day of the week. And you might not be able to promise that right yet, but you are still ready to hire. So you want to ask those kinds of questions. Okay. So that's now that we've gotten personality match and scheduling match under our belts, let's talk about skills match. So skills match is certainly important, especially with you know anything that you're doing that might involve technology. If you are looking to hire somebody who do to do admin these days, they have to be comfortable with technology at this point. We're past the point of paper calendars and things like that. There's a lot of technology in the back end of a staging business, at least a a cleanly run, smoothly run staging business. Um, So you want to make sure that somebody has the skills that you're looking for. If you're looking for a styling assistant and you want to evaluate that ahead of time, have them send you pictures of things they have done, spaces they have styled in their own home. That will give you a good sense of, do they have the skill set available in order to be able to do this work. If they move further in your process, you can plan a hands-on styling day so you can see how they operate. But at at the beginning, just have them submitting some images of their work is perfect for you to be able to evaluate, okay, do they have a skill set match? And then there are filtering questions matches. And these are more like your qualifications, right? So the filters matches, I I talked a lot um, in a previous podcast early on about client filters. You can also have employee filters. So these are things like they need to have a valid driver's license and reliable transportation. They need to feel comfortable standing on step ladders. They need to feel comfortable and be able to lift or move up to 50 pounds, for example. They need to be able to lift over their heads. They need to be able to bend over and kneel um, as a part of their process, if they're, you know, in your styling evaluation, they need, pro, you know, proficiency using spreadsheets, if that's something important with you. They need the ability to use Google Calendar and email. And I'm selling you all of these things because these are things that when I was looking to hire team originally did not have these things, have to feel comfortable using their mobile device, right? We, in our company, we use a lot of apps. They need to feel very comfortable on their mobile device using apps, things like that. So those are your employee filters matches. So in your application, you want to make sure you have an area where you ask for things like that. So I hope this has given you some food for thought to get started with your first hiring and what you can do. And um, my hope is that I can in another podcast, share with you those personality tests that we have. I'd like to just be able to send those over to you so that you have them because they really are very powerful. But get started with this process. Don't get on the phone with people. (laughs) 
<laughs> don't want to hire everybody like I do because trust me, if you don't have the right person in place, it can derail everything. And I say this from experience, having hired somebody who wasn't a great fit for our business. I've talked about it before. Um, it left my other team who I absolutely loved and had come to rely upon. It left them wanting to leave the business. And it was because I had not acknowledged that this person wasn't a right fit for really more from a personality match and a little bit of a skill set match. And it just kind of poisoned the feel of everything else around them. So learn from my lessons and now learn from um, what I'm doing right, which is this hiring process. It's phenomenal. You will love it. Okay. That is your sip for the week. I look forward to seeing you next week and um, just have a wicked good one, right? All right. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to the Staging Sips podcast. If you love what you've learned here today, please take a minute to rate and review it so more staging business owners can find us. And if you want to learn more about how to market and grow your staging business more strategically, I'd love to see you join us inside of the Rethink You Accelerate Mentorship Program. It is open enrollment. And you can get more details at rethinkhomeinteriors.com forward slash rethink you. Would love to see you inside.